Hey everyone, today we're going to learn how to do integration tests on Azure functions that use HTTP triggers using SpecFlow. That was a mouthful, let's jump into the code. So this is a basic function I've written, it's for a calculator add method. It has a, a first value, a second value, you can do a get and a post with this method. Um, usually I would separate them, but if you're following along you might be used to the default example and that has get and post in one method. We're actually only going to be looking at the get today, but this is the code for the post if you want that as well. All of the code for today's episode is going to be in a GitHub link in the description. So it has the two values, it gets them from the request, and it literally just returns the result, adding them together. This function is already uploaded to my Azure Functions account, so we can just look straight at the tests and we don't have to worry about that setup. If you do want to learn how to do that, I'll link a video below as well showing you how to publish to Azure. So if we go over to our test project and we look at the feature, the test project I've got is the default one. I haven't changed anything yet. We're going to start by just getting rid of this and the example it gives is already a calculator so i'm just going to base my tutorial off of this and if we actually just rebuild the program now the specflow extension will pick up this as well and again if you want to learn how that works i'll link another video that i made to that as well so we can push f12 and it will take us to the definition of this now these are all the default definitions that specflow gives us based off of the steps to find here we're just going to fill in all the information to make these actually do something now we have all these individual steps that are called, and we're going to need to share the information between them. So the way that we're going to do that, we're actually going to use context injection. So if I paste in this, this is a constructor, and it's going to inject the scenario context automatically for us when the test is called, and it's going to store it in a variable up here for us. So all of our functions can access it. Now, the scenario context itself is actually a dictionary. So we can just do this, and we can set first equal to the number passed in. Similarly, we can do that with the next function as well. Now, the when step is actually used to do the logic itself. So we need to retrieve the information, and it doesn't know what it is straight away. So we have to pass it to an integer. What we also want to do is make some kind of actual request to our Azure function um, and get the response from that and store that as the result in the scenario context. So I've got this function here, and I'm just going to paste that in below because it's one I've already made. And because we're using a HTTP trigger, we can literally just test this using a normal HTTP client. You'll notice the URL I've got here requires some bits that need to be filled in, namely the URL and the API key. So we're going to actually go and grab these from the Azure function app in Azure itself. So this is our function app in Azure, and we actually need to get two values from this. We need the URL, which we can copy from here. And if we go to app keys, we're going to get an app key for the entire application so we can run multiple tests off of just one key. So now that we've got those, we can come back to Visual Studio and we can paste the URL in here and we can paste the API key in here. Now we're just going to hard code the connection string and the API key for now, but in your own project, you really want to manage your secrets more securely. But this is just our example, so we'll have it nice and simple for now. So we have the next line, which makes the request, and then we read the result at the end and return it. After our when call, we've finally got our then function. Now, our then step is actually what we use to do our assertions, just like you would for any other kind of test, like a unit test or something. So we're going to paste in this. We're going to get the response. This time it's stored as a string because the web request gives us a string back and we don't really need to worry about passing the result. In fact, we can change the function input itself to be a string because this can be anything really. This just maps onto any value, so it doesn't actually have to you know, specify integer anywhere, although you can do that using regex if you want to. And here we're just doing an assertion using fluent assertions. Now, the one thing I want to do before I hit run, I actually want to change this to 121. I want the test to break first. And the reason for that is we want to apply the theory of red green testing. So something should start out breaking and then you should make a change to fix it. And that way you know that your test is actually testing some code is working rather than, you know, the code sort of always passing behind the scenes and you just sort of accepting that you know, it's done what it's supposed to. We're actually going to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to. So we're going to run all of our tests. And the test has failed. And there we go. It's a bit hard to see, but expected response to be 121, but actually it's 120. So we know now it's actually calling our API and it's doing the addition properly. It's giving us the 120 we're expecting. So we can change that back and run our test again. And there we go. It passed now. So for today's episode, we'll just look at doing the get like we've done here. If you want to test the post, all you need to do is do a normal post like you would do in a HTTP client. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to use SpecFlow today, do an integration test on an Azure function. If you liked this video, check back in the future and I'll be doing integration test videos for other types of trigger for a Azure function.
If you don't want to miss that, maybe think about subscribing. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.